Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at an update to the most powerful automation tool for Premiere Pro. Now, if you haven't heard of Excalibur, I've got a whole tutorial that uh, I'll link to in the description. Basically, it's a tool that runs inside Premiere Pro that will automate almost anything in Premiere Pro. If it's not automated in Excalibur, then it's probably not available to be automated. So they've uh, done, created a, a great update and I'm gonna show you just the update stuff that's going on right now. And just to let you know, there are a ton of professional video editors that count on Excalibur every single day uh, for their uh, speed in, in their workflow. It's just incredible what you can do, including multiple commands with one keyboard shortcut. So let's have a look. All right, the first one took me a little bit to, to try to figure out because basically I'm doing the same tutorial that they are doing, but uh, it's using sequences in a pancake timeline uh, or a string out. So here I've got three different sequences, source one, source two, source three. Each one has multiple uh, clips in it. And then I've got a master sequence down here at the bottom that's empty. I'm going to be taking clips from this and dragging them down into here. And a lot of people use this and they call it a pancake timeline because it's a pancake of multiple like pancakes stacked up on top of each other. And the update for Excalibur is being able to use match frame with a, a nested sequence. And this is something Premiere Pro can't do. So I'm going to go to source one. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm in my editing workspace and this has the source monitor over here and the program monitor over here. And I'm going to drag in these three sequences into the source monitor and they're available now, source one, two, and three, because I'm gonna be matching a frame from the master sequence down here to the source monitor, and including the sub sequence. Okay, so I'll go to, to uh, source one, and just grab some clips and drag them in. Go to two, same thing, grab some clips, go to three, and drag them in. Now, if I want to match to a specific, specific frame, so let's say this one here, uh, I'll hit Alt spacebar or Option spacebar on the Mac to bring it up. And so I'll go, remember I'm matching to this source freak. So I'll type in MAT for match frame to source sequence. And you see it finds it right there. And it's not finding the clip, it's finding the source sequence. Same thing here, we'll match that sequence. Boom. And even though this is gonna be in a different place down here, we'll match that source sequence. Go to the middle here, match source sequence. So whatever we're on top of, it will take us to that sequence. And it actually works with reverse match frame. Same thing. Boom. So this might sound a little bit complicated. I mean, I would never use this, but this is an example of how Knights of the Editing Table, which is the company that makes this, Ivan is the guy, he's listening to what editors want. So these editors are using Excalibur, but they're asking for this because Premiere Pro can't do this. So let's look at a few more things that Premiere Pro can't do that Excalibur can do. So I'm gonna change back to a different workspace. Okay. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna open up and change the speed of these clips. And I'll select the first three and type speed. And I'll change this to three. 
50% and just use the standard speed change that Premiere Pro has right now. So these are all at 50%. The middle ones here, I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'll change the speed and the duration at, to 200%. And you can see they're all sped up now. And they have a space in there. And the third one is, whoops, and the third one is the ripple edit. So it changes the speed and it ripple trims all of the, the spaces and gets rid of the gap. So there you go. If you're constantly doing a speed change and then having to remove the gap or change uh, the duration, this is what Excalibur can do. Next up are keyframes and being able to add and remove keyframes. And the way that uh, Ivan explains this is Premiere Pro with Excalibur now operates more like After Effects uh, in adding and removing keyframes. So let's have a look at this example. So I'm showing my um, video keyframes and this is the opacity keyframe here. I'm selecting the clip and gonna type opacity and here I can set a value, I can modify a value and add delete keyframes. So I'm gonna add and delete a keyframe and you can see it's added the keyframe here. I'll go back in and then I'll set a value to zero. And you can see we've got 100 to 0% and here's what's really valuable. If I add and delete the keyframe, you'll see it deleted the keyframe and brought it back up to where the first one is. So this keyframe is dictating what the opacity is at 100%. So this is more like After Effects. Now the next one is really powerful. If you're like me, honestly, I don't like having to make tiny little keyframes, especially when it comes to audio fixes. Sometimes you need to quickly dip the audio mm -mm -mm -mm, and you're zooming in and, mm -mm, and it's, it's a pain. Well, how about automation? I'm gonna show you this and, th and then we'll pick it apart. So watch this. I'll select this clip and I've saved something called audio dip. Watch the timeline. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, let me make that a little bit uh, smaller so you can see that. Let me get rid of those. Okay, let's do it again. Audio, watch, boop, boop, boop. Look at that, boom. Okay, how is this possible? Go to the window menu, extensions, Excalibur settings. And the, this is where you get all the commands. And I, I have a whole bunch of plugins loaded, audio plugins, and I've got Film Impact. So everything that those plugins have available um, are available here. Every single plugin, every single effect can be automated. And here's Audio Dip. That's the user command that I created. So I'm adding a keyframe then moving the playhead, then adding a value, moving the playhead, and this is what's new, being able to move the playhead. So you could make this a tiny little dip. If it's a little, a click or a snap or a pop or a cough, you can make it even smaller. Here it's, it's a larger value just so you can see it. So I'll show you. I'm going to move, and you see move playhead down there. Move playhead. Time code, let's move it to 100. And it moves right to 100. So being able to add, delete, change values, move the playhead and keyframes, wow, it really is, the, the sky's the limit on how much you can use this for automating Premiere Pro. Excalibur is great because it does things like this that Premiere Pro can't do, and 
it's constantly being updated. In fact, when I launched this morning, there was a new update in there. So go check out, link in the, in the description, go check out uh, Knights of the Editing Table. They have more than just Excalibur. They've got tools to uh, unnest, nest, and, and uh, resurrect. Oh my goodness. It, they have fun with their names too, but there's a lots of great, lot of great tools there for you to try out. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more, you can do that at videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly, any amount. We appreciate all of our wonderful donors that support us. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen when Ivan tells me he's got something new uh, cooking, and I'm here to show you how you can automate Premiere Pro.